Hey guys, I want to talk real quick about some scanner software. Ape and I mentioned this the other night on my channel when we did our scanner live stream. This is ProScan, and this software will allow you to remotely monitor and drive and program a whole ton of scanners. And I have it hooked to a uh, Uniden uh, 996P2. BCD 996P2 or the Trunk Tracker 5. And you can see up here on the screen, it shows a representation of the display. And the purpose of this video is just to kind of familiarize you with what this software will do. Um, we're not going to monitor a whole bunch of stuff. I don't want to do that. But I do want to walk through some of the functionality of this software. And I hope you guys can see that screen well enough. So, this software supports multiple types of scanners. And the first thing I want to do is pull up this list. So this is a 996P2. Here's a list of all the scanners this software supports. And as you can see, there's probably 25 or 30 scanners on here. Um, of course, the SDS scanners, which are the newest ones from Uniden. The SDS-100, the SDS-200. Um, I think the 100E and 200E might be the Home Patrol models. I'm not really familiar with them. I have an SDS-100. That is not what's hooked up at the moment. As well as a host of other scanners, some of these are analog. Um, some of these are fairly old. I also have a BC780 XLT, and uh, it actually has a 9-pin serial port on the back of it. This particular scanner uses uh, mini USB. So this supports a ton of unit in scanners um, over quite a span of time because my 780 is probably 15 or 20 years old at least. So anyway, that's the first thing is the, all the scanners that supports. And one of the big things here is how you're going to program this. So I can create a system. I can tell it what kind of system I want to create. And you can see here we have a whole bunch of choices. Motorola, um, EDAX systems, LTR systems, P25 standard trunks, which is uh, commonly used in public safety stuff, P25 one frequency trunk, Moto Turbo, DMR trunks, which is tier three, not something that hams typically use, but public safety does use DMR tier three, I believe. Okay, and it do NXDN um, trunks as well as uh, NXDN one frequency trunks. So it does a whole ton of different systems. The systems that come with this um, are pretty standard amongst all of the Uniden uh, systems. One of the systems that you have to add on typically is going to be DMR and NXDN and Pro Voice. Um, and those are options for these scanners. Those options run about $60 a piece. And that would be the same for this 996P2 scanner that I have hooked up or something newer like an SDS-100 or an SDS-200. So anyway, it covers uh, quite a lot of, of systems, different kinds of digital and as well as analog systems. And of course, you can set this up and um, mine's woefully out of date because I, I had DMR on it for a while and I was listening to like Alabama Link and um, a whole bunch of stuff and it was just more talking than I wanted to listen to. But we also have uh, here, I've got a bunch of public safety stuff. Um, you can pick what systems you want to listen to. And within that system, I can pick the agencies I want to listen to. And then within the agencies, these are, for example, Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, different um, units or organizations within the Sheriff's Office. And I can select these over here. And this shows me the list, this same list. And I can go through and I can lock out ones. If I don't want to listen to the criminal investigative division, I can lock it out. So typically, I download this list off of uh, radio reference, which is also something Ape and I mentioned. And then I turn off 90% of it. It's just easier to download it all off radio reference and turn off the stuff I don't want than to have to manually put in the stuff I do want. So I can lock out individual agencies, individual channels within a given system. So that's pretty cool. And of course, we have um, the county fire units that are also on the um, Montgomery Metro P25 system. 
Interestingly enough, here in Montgomery County, the fire, the county fire, is also UHF simulcast. Um, so anyway, there's a lot of flexibility there, and you can, like I said, you can import this information from Radio Reference um, up here. One of these options. You can also do call sign lookups. Uh, you can double check and cross check your databases. You can use Google Maps to locate towers because all that information is typically in the FCC database and radio reference, which pulls its information from the FCC database. We can change the display, how the scanner representation works. Um, a very cool feature of ProScan is that I can run this as a standalone web server. So if I set that up properly and port forward and all that through my router, I can use a web browser and web in and have this screen in my web browser where I can listen to whatever systems are set up to monitor on my scanner locally, which is super cool because here I have a good antenna pointing at a specific P25 tower. I can hear the county stuff way better remotely using this system than I would be able to in my office in town at work. So that's an outstanding feature. A lot of this is database management stuff, as you can see. We can, of course, download the current contents of the scanner, upload to the scanner, modify stuff, all the, all the kind of standard stuff you'd expect, find and replace globally, duplicate check. We can update tags, of course, and all that information. Under general settings, we can set screen colors. We can set, um, you know, any, any of the parameters that you would, would set for the scanner. One thing Ape talked about on our stream on Tuesday was that the unit and scanners have a function called um, close call, which is if you get a frequency breaks squelch within a certain radius of you mileage wise, then the scanner, the scanner is monitoring. So if I want to listen to public safety and I set close call for 10 miles, any public safety frequencies within 10 miles are being monitored. And if something keys up, then the scanner will grab that traffic. I don't have that on. I know all the public safety around here, so I don't use close call. If you're in a large area or you're trying to find stuff, it's a great feature. Once you've found stuff, it's kind of annoying, in my opinion. With radio reference and with the ability to program in my location, there's really no need for close call once you have everything set up. So... Um, our general options, um, here's our close call options, um, some other search options. We can also set alerts on different frequencies. Um, so, for example, when I was still active in the fire department, I had the fire department frequency in here. And even though I had a paging radio in the house, um, the scanner would flash the screen red whenever my department, Pent Lala Fire, got a call. So that's kind of a cool feature. They all, this one supports weather um, using FIPS codes. So I can program it for the different counties that I care about the weather for, that kind of stuff. Um, it will monitor broadcast UHF, VHF TV, NOAA weather radio, FM, and pager bands. That's particular to this scanner. I don't monitor any of that, so that's kind of no, uh, no big deal for me. Here's where I set the um, fire tone out thing, and that's a specific function of this scanner, and the software supports that for this scanner. Lockouts, band coverage, band scope, um, a, a whole ton of other things. Um, here's the, um, we can use this as a client to broadcast whatever traffic the scanner's listening to, to a service like Broadcastify. Or, uh, or one of those. And there's another couple of them that I can't think of. Shoutcast um, is one of them. S and Icecast. So I can use this as a Shoutcast client, for example. And any of those services that amalgamate different Shoutcast channels or Broadcastify, which is an amalgamation thing, I can pump my audio stream out of my scanner to that to share with a wider audience. And I don't have to have people web webbing into my scanner directly. Of course, here's the web server functionality. I mentioned that. Um, 
There's some other ways that you can manage the scanner remotely uh, over the internet. I don't want to get into all those. That's kind of a lengthy thing. We can change audio so I can put the audio out to a computer or something like that. I can set it up to record automatically. Um, there's some test functionality. This shows the data stream. This is similar to the cat commands on a, um, on a, a HF rig, for example. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat. So anyway, that was what I wanted to share with you today was this software called um, ProScan. This software, uh, we'll jump to the home page here, I believe is about $50, and I believe it was a lifetime license for this software. Um, I know it's a lifetime license because I haven't paid for it in quite a while, and I keep getting updates every so often. It comes with a 30-day fully functional demo trial. I never, um, I'm not getting paid by ProScan. I'm just sharing this with, with, come on, with you guys, my buddies. Um, the current version here is uh, 19.6. They put out upgrades on this on a regular basis. They have a client, which if I, if you have someone who has um, the ProScan remote server running, like for example, someone with the full client, me, you could download the free client and remotely control, manage, listen to my scanner that way as well. So there's a lot of really neat functionality within ProScan that, in my opinion, makes using the scanner a whole lot easier and, and a whole lot more fun because it, you don't have to sit there and, you know, go through the keypad on the scanner to, to manage it. So that's, that's pretty slick. Um, I believe, I was looking to see if we could find the cost on here, purchase info. I believe it's $50 for this software. Yeah. Um, and each license allows activation on two separate computers. So if you have, like I do, a computer in my shop and a computer in the house, then I could use it on two different computers with different scanners. So that's pretty swank. And uh, the license is, is lifetime. You get it via email in you know, a few minutes kind of deal. So anyway, I, I wanted to share that with you guys today. Um, since Ape and I had been talking about scanners the other day, I wanted to kind of go through this and, uh, and let you guys see what all we had here um, with this software. It's pretty cool. Um, like I said, I really, I really think it adds a lot to your scanning experience. So, guys, that's all I have in this video. If you would, click that thumbs up and uh, give me a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell and let me so you get notified whenever I post any new content. Guys, 73. Have a great day.